Hey, it's Alex here and welcome to the Geeks Table. It happens so that my main job is writing code. I'm an app developer. I write code, compile it into apps and check them on the devices to work properly. This requires a lot of computing power and an iPad won't replace my MacBook in this space anytime soon, unless they will allow you to install the new macOS Big Sur on an iPad. But I was pleasantly surprised to discover that an iPad can actually be a nice companion device for a developer, especially if you have a keyboard and a trackpad attached. So in this video, I'll show you the apps that I use in my workflow, and I hope some of them may be interesting for you as well. The first one that comes to my mind is GitHub. We store the code there, do the code review, and manage the branches that might or might not go to the next release. The official GitHub app is really good. It supports the dark theme, shows you all the needed info, allows you to command the code, and also supports some hotkeys. If you are a team lead who checks the code for a few hours a day, this can be a huge improvement for your workflow because you can do it from anywhere you like. But if you want to go beyond that and have a tool to create pull requests and edit the code on the fly, you might be interested in an app called Working Copy. It's a more advanced GitHub client that gives you more control over the repository. How many of you had this moment when you forgot to change one digit or to add a closing bracket and now the build is failing? With such an app, you'll be able to fix that from your iPad, even if you are on your way home already. I know a lot of web developers love the Visual Studio Code text editor. It's fast, it supports plugins, it has a lot of hotkeys. I even know some people who can't stand any of Microsoft products except this one. Well, obviously we don't have a VS Code app on the iPadOS yet, but did you know that it can be launched officially in the cloud? And there is an app that does this work for you, and it's called VS App. So it actually sets up an instance of VS Code in the cloud and gives you the control over the program as if it were on your computer. And it's the very same VS Code with tabs, plugins, hotkeys, and all shits and giggles that you know and love. The downside though, that you have to have an internet connection to make this work properly. The app has a seven days trial period and then you have to have a subscription. However, if you use your own server to launch VS Code, then the app is completely free. In case you need to access your computer remotely from your iPad, then you might consider to have a remote desktop app. There are plenty of them and I've tried TeamViewer, VNC Viewer, RD Client from Microsoft and some others. But here's the thing, if you need to write code, you need the keyboard. If you need to be productive, you need to use the hotkeys. And the only app that had both of these things covered is Jump Desktop. It's a paid app, but the value is good enough to be paid for. You have to have an app to be installed on the remote machine if you want to connect to it from anywhere. The picture can be a bit blurry, but it's still acceptable. Jump Desktop also supports trackpad and mouse, so you'll be able to use it normally compared to the other apps because they don't support mice and trackpads yet. Most of the hotkeys are passed through the iPadOS to the remote desktop. However, if an iPad has the same combination, then it will only handle it locally. So for example, command tab won't work on the remote machine. iPadOS just won't pass it through. So better to hold the command key and check the predefined hotkeys first. It depends which OS you use right now, but for both Windows and Mac OS, the list was pretty impressive. We, the developers, love to read documentation. Well, maybe not really, but we have to do it from time to time anyways. And it's not a big deal to Google it when you're on your PC or Mac, but what if you are on a train ride and your cellular connection is down? Then it's better to have it stored somewhere locally. For this purpose, I use Dash. It's a free app with lots of docs and cheat sheets that you can download and update when needed. And while you're on the go, you can browse and search through them with no internet access at all. So I've downloaded my Android development stuff here and also a cheat sheet for the Git system. If I'm lost, I can easily search for, let's say, delete branch and see exactly the command I need. So this might be your pocket library. I know only two types of developers. The ones who love to work with the two or more screens at the same time and the ones who haven't yet tried to do so. If you work on a Mac, you can use your iPad as a second screen by using the sidecar mode, which allows you to turn your iPad to a wired or wireless remote display. The latency is minimal and the resolution is great for writing code. 
And worth to mention that if a keyboard is attached to your iPad, then you can use it on your parent machine as well. But keep in mind that it won't pass through the hotkeys that are built in the iPad OS. Oh, and worth to mention that the trackpad won't work either. It's just a cursor on your tablet. So here they are, the apps for a developer to use. Hope some of them were useful for you, and if yes, hit the like button, please. So and what about you? Do you use your iPad at work? What apps do you use there? Let me know down in the comments, and if you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geek's Table.